As we draw closer to the All-Star break, it's not time to just sit back and take it easy. In fact, this is the time where you can sit back and look at what does your team need, how can you get it. In other words, go make some buy-low offers. Let's start with a pair of aces in the AL East. Now, I don't always talk about some of the frontline starters, the actual aces, you know, the first, second round picks, because a lot of people would just look and say, come on, nobody's selling him, right? You're not going to be able to buy low. But again, you would be surprised. This happens all the time. People get very impatient. And especially when you're down in the standings, you need to make a move. Sometimes you're willing to give up a player, even somebody like Garrett Cole. Now, if you have Garrett Cole, it's probably because you've had him stashed for half the season, waiting patiently or impatiently for him to come back. And now he's finally back. Why would you move on now? Well, you probably aren't really satisfied with what you've gotten so far in three starts, been less than stellar. He currently owns a 6.23 ERA and a 1.46 whip. I know it's only three starts. He's easing his way back, but some people just don't like that. They don't want to see that. Get him out of here. Let's move on from him and let's get somebody who is actually healthy, actually playing like an ace. I'm telling you, people think this way. Now, there's some cause for concern here. I will give you that. His first start, only four innings. That's understandable. Second start, also only four innings. He also gave up six runs in those four innings and gave up four home runs in one game. But that was the Mets. Okay, the grimace factor, fine. His last start, better. He only gave up one run, but he only went five innings. So this is going to raise a red flag for some people and thinking, well, maybe he's going to be limited for a while. Maybe he isn't 100%. Maybe we won't see vintage Garrett Cole, the guy who was amazing. Well, most of his career, but even just last year. Also not encouraging that in his 13 innings so far, 11 strikeouts to 6 walks. But there's a reason I've got him here as a buy low, potentially, and not a panic. I mean, we're not worried about him. At least I'm not worried about him. And if there's somebody who is willing to move him for a lot less than they were before he actually was pitching this season, this is probably your last chance to get a bargain. Now, a pitcher who's actually been great all year, you might say, why would anybody sell Tanner Houck right now? I mean, he's been out there every five days, and he's been just flat out one of the best pitchers in fantasy and real life. But again, people are reactionary. He just finally had a bad start. He's really only had two not great starts this season, and the worst one was his most recent. I love to try to throw out an offer if there's any chance you're going to get a guy like this right after a disaster start because then that's when some people who maybe just really didn't fully buy into his breakout season are always just kind of waiting for that bad luck to hit. You know, the regression hits everybody, right, in baseball, especially it comes for us all. But it's happened to how can, you know, it actually might continue. First, let me explain his very last start against San Diego, gave up seven earned runs in four and a third inning. That game alone jumped his ERA by half a run and his whip finally went over the one mark for the first time since mid-April. That's because he hadn't allowed more than three earned runs in a game before then, but just once, and that was that mid-April start. Look at the trajectory of all his starts this season. There's two very obvious blips on the radar, and the last one was the most noticeable. And this game was very notable because he gave up three home runs in this game alone, after only having given up two home runs the entire season. Now, this is my stance on how, because I'm going to wait and see, because honestly, his very next start might not be so great either. It's on the road, Yankee Stadium, pretty good offense, and he still, I think, has a little bit of regression to come because he's outperforming his expected ERA for his actual ERA by almost a full run. So if we see another rough outing from Hauk, Yeah, people will start to worry. They'll think, okay, the run is over. You know, he's finally back to reality. He's running out of gas, whatever it is. Now, if Houck shuts out the Yankees or just looks like he has all season, okay, fine. Buy low windows closed, just move on. But keep an eye out. If he doesn't have a good start, that might be time to pounce. Aces are hard to come by in fantasy, especially in the middle of the season. What's almost harder to come by, though, is a reliable catcher. You hate playing the waiver wire every single week. Just try to get somebody to fill that position. Why not just settle for a guy who is stable, if unexciting, like Will Smith of the Dodgers? He hasn't been especially exciting. He actually hasn't been that disappointing either. 
But some people recently are starting to grumble a little bit, maybe not getting what they thought they would from Smith. You know, he started out June hitting 294 and to end the month down to 269. Still respectable, especially for a catcher, but also worried because he's had a few hitless games in a row. In fact, four game hitless streak. And that was also with some days off kind of sprinkled in there. And the power hasn't really been there lately either. Only two home runs in all of June. But let's step back here and look at the big picture. He is just fine. In fact, he is right on track to meet, if not surpass, his preseason projections. And those projections, not surprisingly, had Will Smith as one of the better hitting catchers in the game. Well, he is almost on track to exactly meet those projections. You know, right now he's hitting about 269. His preseason projection was 261 as far as average to hit 21 home runs, 75 RBIs, and 71 runs. Right now, if you look at updated steamer projections in season, he's on pace to finish with an average of 263, 21 home runs, 84 RBIs. So in fact, he should be getting more runs batted in than we thought we were going to get from him on draft day. Look, there's nothing wrong here. Every catcher gets some days off. Every single hitter goes through a rough week. And Will Smith is just fine. He's on a good offense. Once Mookie Betts actually comes back, this will, again, probably be the best offense in the National League. So for some reason, you're hurting a catcher and maybe whoever has Smith is willing to trade him because they've got another catcher in stock. I don't know why you would trade him, but look, I've heard some people complaining about him. This might be the time to try to secure somebody in that catcher position and stop having to play the waiver wire every single week. Another guy that really doesn't get talked about much in fantasy because, again, he's just kind of there every day. But the good news is Willie Adamas is out there every day, and that in and of itself has a lot of value. Entering midweek, Willie Adamas had 370 plate appearances so far the first half of the season, 13 most in the majors. Now, I think that Adamas could be a buy low right now because he's hit a slump lately, batting average all the way down to 235 after hitting just 167 in the month of June. But kind of like what I just said to Will Smith, this is basically what you should have expected from Adamas. He's a career 246 hitter. In fact, he's doing a lot better than last year. Remember that batting average went down to 217. Not somebody who hits really for average anymore, but he gives you some power, some speed, and the counting stats. I mean, partly just because he's out there every single day. Like I said, he's in also a pretty good offense in Milwaukee, and he can produce as an RBI guy. In fact, 55 RBI so far, that's the second most among all shortstop behind just Gunnar Henderson. 13 home runs, 10 steals, on pace for a 2020 season possibly. The runs are good. I mean, it's again, nothing that jumps off the page at you. He's not a guy that makes a ton of highlights. He's just quiet and consistent, but productive. And before long, you'll realize this guy's very valuable in fantasy, other than maybe that one category of the batting average. But look, this is something that shouldn't overshadow how effective he is in all the other four major categories. And believe it or not, an everyday player in that Baltimore Orioles offense, a young player too, that I still think is undervalued is Jordan Westberg. So many other big names and prospects to talk about there. He really gets lost in the shuffle. But what does he do? He's out there every day and he produces. He gets you runs, RBIs. Not a true power hitter. Not a guy who's stealing many bases, but he's helping you across the board. And honestly, this year has been really disappointing for second base and really surprising. Some of the names that are up there in terms of fantasy value are not guys you would expect. And a lot of that's because some of the names we did expect are not up there. Every fantasy league has different, you know, scoring settings and things like that. But if you look at objectively, one of the best ways to rate players offensively, it's weighted runs created, WRC plus. And you can also look at something that Fangraphs has called offensive rating, which combines batting and base running. Well, among qualified second basemen, Jordan Westbrook is second in weighted runs created, and he's third in offensive rating. That's because he's been consistent and he's good across the board. Like I said, among all those second basemen, seventh in batting average, third most home runs, third most RBIs, sixth in runs scored. And even though he's really not a base dealer, he's still top 10 in stolen bases at second base. 
I really have considered Jordan Westberg a buy low pretty much the entire season. I mean, again, this guy does not get enough respect. He's going to be out there every day, qualifies. Middle infield, it's so important and helps you in pretty much every category. So I feel like Westberg is a nice buy. Like instead of going out and still trying to fish for Ozzy Albies and hoping that he turns it around, now nah, just give me a guy who's actually being productive. And if you want to take on some risk with some upside for the second half, how about another Oriole who maybe won't be in Baltimore after the trade deadline? Cedric Mullins, the former all-star center fielder, definitely not playing like that anymore. It's been kind of a steady downhill decline for Mullins. And this year, I mean, it seems inevitable that he's just going to lose that job altogether at some point. He's already starting to lose playing time only hitting 218. He has provided some power and he definitely still has speed, but come on, this is a team with World Series aspirations. I just don't know, especially with so many young players there who need playing time, why not just stick Colton Kowser in center field, keep Kierstad in the lineup every single day, or you know what, they actually might go out and get somebody like a Luis Robert, another outfielder that they feel is more dependable, who knows. With that said, although obviously leaving Baltimore doesn't seem like a good thing, maybe Mullins actually falls into more playing time if he does get shipped off to another team. Now, with that, I'll put some stipulations on here. If he goes, which has been rumored recently, to a team like San Francisco, well, I don't think that's good. In fact, that might make me move completely off of Mullins because even if he plays there every day, you know, they're looking for a boost, I guess, that lineup. It's just not good because they're a team that does not run very often. I don't see him stealing a ton of bases there. And of course, it's the worst possible park for a power hitter. If the O's make a move for Luis Robert or Tommy Pham and Mullins winds up with the White Sox, yeah, no thanks. But if Mullins does wind up with a team that's still a contender, even if it's like as a fourth outfielder, I don't feel like his playing time could be less. Might give him a little boost, at the very least a motivation to show he's still got it. And I will say, even if the worst happens, if they gets, I don't know, DFA'd or something or winds up on some team that's an absolute non-contender, like even like the Marlins, at least he gets everyday playing time and he's free to do whatever he wants, swing free, run free. Uh, again, this may be good for his fantasy stats. I wouldn't count on Mullins, but again, if you're looking for a guy you can stash on your bench with some upside, this is a buy very low right now. You could get some great deals on those players while they're struggling temporarily. What about these guys who are just really having a hard time lately? How much should you panic? I'll tell you. 